Now a while ago I scored a whole bunch of uh, Brule and Care gear. I don't know if it's broken or not. Uh, I think it was just thrown out due to being surplus to requirements. Uh, this is one of the l less interesting items, but I'll start with this. It's a model ZR005, triple zero five, logarithmic potentiometer. Now I haven't been able to find any information on this thing, uh, other than I've seen a few photos of it, mostly things on eBay, which all appear to be the same as this, except that they often come with a nice wooden box and the actual values here might vary so it's just like a 10k pot versus a 1k pot I guess um, but the back part seems to be the same on all of them and what's curious is as you turn this knob it doesn't seem to connect to anything except this screw on the back it comes out here so I'm suspecting that this is actually used for something else it clugs onto it and these here pins are merely for locating it correctly so that the screw can then engage with something and I believe that something then moves a wiper along this track here because that's made up of very fine wire it's like a wire wound potentiometer so maybe that's the resistance there and this here is some sort of electrical terminal uh, made by Brule and Care which if you don't know is a Danish company and they specialize in the field of test and measurement of sound and vibration and in that field they are the duck's guts which is pretty much as good as it gets so whatever's in here I'm quite confident that it's of the best possible quality so we should probably uh, pull it apart hey eh? Okay, I've loosened that, taken out those four screws, so pop the back off and well, it's not much is it? Ah. Ah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what? A lot of resistors. A buttload of them. And that really does seem to be sort of a wiper so but nothing here wipes along it so maybe there's something there really is something that goes on the back oh dear and a few caps in there as well and here but <laughs> a lot of hand wiring that's, that's all pretty fiddly stuff down there Um, yes, yeah, so this knob doesn't operate anything inside this box, it just comes out the back. So I'm guessing that that operates some wiper that goes along here. And rather than that being the resistance element, these are, they're just, uh, that's just like a takeoff point, it's just a, a mini multi-pointed switch well yeah two percent hmm well wasn't that interesting so we've got three rows of nine resistors so it's 27 resistors per board eight of those so it looks like 216 different resistors and they appear to all be wired out to this as 216 separate contacts and some sort of a slider would move along that so this is sort of a cross between a rotary potentiometer like this and a linear potentiometer like that it takes rotary at the front but something that this thing plugs into presumably converts that to a, a linear motion of a contact along there so pots can obviously come in linear or rotary and obviously different values of the total resistance across the ends the other potential point of difference in potentiometers is 
the rate at which the resistance of changes as you move from one end of travel to the other. So drawing that as a picture, if we have resistance versus travel, and that could be in degrees if you're talking rotary, in a, as you'd expect, most potentiometers work like this. The resistance increases linearly from one end of travel to the other from zero to the maximum resistance at the maximum travel. But there is another type called log pops, which are used when typically in audio uh, for controlling volume because the human ear hole has a non-linear response to uh, power, right? To, to get to, for something to sound twice as loud, it has to be 10 times as powerful. So, what they want in a log pod is something like this. A curve like that. So it's linear log. And I always thought that a log pot, they look the same, you've got to check. They usually have an A if they're linear, or the other way. I think it's A with linear and B or C with log, although I might have that backwards. Um, I always thought that inside there, the resistance material was actually continuously varying to provide that log graph. But about a year ago, I was, found myself needing to research log pots a bit. And to my surprise, that's not the case. What they actually do is have two separate areas of resistance, but they're both linear. So one goes like that, and one goes like that. Torn that badly, say like that. Ignore this line here, and you can see that that line, thus formed, is a lot closer to the log curve than this straight line. God, that's drawn badly, isn't it? I'll draw that again. Linear log. So there's our desired log. There's normal linear. And then we've got uh, section one and section two. So all I've done is halfway through the resistance material changes. So you get effectively this line here, which is close, an approximation to the log graph. It's certainly closer to the log graph than to the linear line, and apparently that's good enough for most purposes. But not for Bruin care. They don't mess around, those guys. So what they've done is actually put in a resistor, 216 resistors. At all these points, 216 of them. So, so instead of just two sections of constant resistance, they've got 216 sections. So they're going to be able to reproduce that log graph much, much more faithfully. And I believe that's what's going on here. Yeah, so there you go. So this isn't much of a teardown, is it? Um, to make up for that, next time I will do this guy, which is a type 2706 power amplifier by Bruin Care. A bit dusty, I'll clean it up before then. Um, and yeah. If you're looking forward to seeing that, don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video and catch you later.